Hey class, Adam Ward here. Uh, I wanted to work through an exercise today uh, looking at um, something similar to our cascade model, uh, just feed forward systems. And so what you're given here uh, are three lakes that are behaving as a series of three CSTRs, um, characteristics describing volumes, loadings, discharges, and effective reaction rates. And so the question here is, calculate the expected steady state concentration in each of these lakes given the heterogeneity in the system. And so what we're going to do then today is those calculations. Um, hopefully your schematic should look something like mine. Um, and so for lake one, I'm going to write out the mass balance here. Uh, we've got our accumulation on the left hand side, V1, DC, DT. And on the right hand side, our loads as positive terms, W1 in this case, and then our, our sinks or our removals of mass as negative terms, minus KVC, minus Q21C1. Right, so that's our mass balance for lake number one. Um, we said that was at steady state, so we can go ahead and make that left hand side equal to zero. And so I'm going to rearrange this uh, to organize myself as inputs are equal to outputs. Uh, if we're at steady state, then by definition, every kilogram of mass that comes in uh, must have a kilogram of mass leaving the system in some way. If that's not true, our steady state concentration is changing. So inputs are equal to outputs. Um, I'll go ahead and solve that equation, just algebraically rearranging it. And that looks like C equals W over A. Um, just like our lecture one equation. Uh, if we plug in values that were given, so our loading in kilograms per day for W on the top, um, our discharge through the system for Q12 is three times 10 to the sixth meters cubed per day, uh, and then K times the volume of lake number one. And so when I go through this problem, I end up with a result of the concentration in lake one equal to 2.28 times 10 to the minus six kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, and of course, we're gonna recognize that could also be represented as micrograms per liter or parts per billion. Um, if you decided to change everything into grams, that's no problem. You're just three orders of magnitude different than my answer. Um, so that is how we would solve lake number one. And so at this point, I'm going to encourage you all to press pause and see if you could repeat these steps of writing the mass balance and calculating the steady state concentrations um, for CSTR number two, recognizing that you've got a new load, Q21, coming in, and for CSTR number three. So pause now. Hey, welcome back. So if you're following along and you did actually pause and do this work, hopefully you got an equation that looks something like this. Um, you see our loads on top. The, the notable difference here is that the flow out of lake number one and into two becomes a source or an input, so it finds itself on the top. W2 plus Q12 C1, and in the denominator, that same assimilation factor for lake number two, it's outflow plus K times V. And so if you solve that at home, you can get 1.95 times 10 to the minus six kilograms per cubic meter. Um, and similarly, you should be able to follow those exact same steps uh, and come up with a concentration for lake number three of 1.54 times 10 to the minus six kilograms per cubic meter. So I wanna just summarize for you what I think are important things to take away from this example. One, you're able to successfully and correctly set up a mass balance for each of those lakes and simplify it for the steady state conditions. Two. For lakes in series that are feed forward systems only, uh, you can solve these in series. So each of the times on the right where you see a red box and then it's got a red arrow pointing to the next downstream lake um, is an indicator of doing that. You can solve one, one allows you to solve two, two to solve three, and so forth. Now, these lakes do have different Ws and different Vs, so loads and volumes. Uh, which means we can't use that shortcut of the cascade model that I showed you in class, where you had what I think W over Q plus KV, and then that quantity raised to the nth power. Um, that's not something that you're gonna be able to do in this system, but solving it in serial is not too bad. Um, and finally, um, as an extension of this problem, I would 
ask you to think about what would you do if you had multiple loads. So what if you had two lakes, one and two, uh, that both came together as loads into a third lake. Uh, you might think of that as Lake Superior as number one, Lake Michigan as number two, and Huron as number three. Right? How would you have to change the mathematics? How would you have to change the approach to deal with a setup like that? Uh, that's something that we'll have you practice in your homework this week. Thanks for sticking with me, class. Um, the next video you watch should be a very similar one to this, but we'll look at a feedback system uh, where we actually let some flow from lake three come back up into lake number one, I believe. All right, stay tuned for that, and thanks for sticking with me through this video.